Hola, como estas? Okay, so I don't even know how this turned out because I've changed the settings on the camera. So hopefully it's good enough. We're having a simple dinner tonight because we had a long driving day. For me, it was long. For some of you, not so long. We are just over 600 miles, 612. For me, that's a long day because I normally don't drive that far. Usually I don't need to. This particular one I needed to. We need to have another 600 mile day tomorrow. All right, BRT, so let's talk about what's today's topic gonna be while you read the title. Um, what could be considered, ow, itchy nose, man. Okay, it's not really interesting, but it's mostly for you Canadian drivers that are coming south and you're not quite sure exactly if you can do this and if you can't do it. And, uh, whether it's interstating, whether it's not interstating. And so the Congress passed a law a number of years ago. They didn't pass a law. It was, it's a clear language uh, thing to make it very easy and understandable. And they did revise the uh, interstating or cabotage laws. Mmm, 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 raviolis. I told you it was a quick dinner. You got her in the nuker here, the cooker. Slow cooker. Hey, I heard that. That was a burp. You ate your food too fast. And clean up the floor. Okay, so what's this pertain to? Simple. Let's give you a scenario of what I do and what I've been doing. And I know some of you are probably going to try to argue the point, but don't because it's pointless. I won't answer you down below. Uh, anyone who has questions, don't bother because what I'm going to tell you is base the basics. What you need to follow and what you can follow if you want to find out more go to the cbp website it tells it all there okay um don't ask me where that is i'm not, I'm not even gonna look it up it's just the only reason i'm bringing this up because someone had asked me the question and they said it all right they just were still confused so here it is example you take a load from toronto to let's say st louis you drop it off you cross an international border correct correct okay that part's easy from St. Louis, you now grab a load going to Laredo. The thing is, the load must, and I say must, be actually final destination going to Mexico. Okay? But you're going to be bringing it to Laredo. This is just a via point. This is not final destination. It's going to Mexico. You are allowed to do this. You're allowed to pick up at St. Louis, bring it down to Laredo, because it's going to Mexico. It must say on the bill of lading... That the final destination, the consignee, whatever, is ABC Manufacturing, wherever in Mexico, or whatever it is, whatever company it is, must say Mexico. The Via Point could be one of the forwarders in Laredo, no big deal. There is a tricky part to that too, we're going to get to that. Now what we do in most, 99.9% .9 of our cases, is we'll just take the trailer into Laredo, to our yard, we drop it and our mexico trucks take it from there why because the load's going to mexico so we're not actually picking up in the u.s and delivering in the u.s it's just a via point it's dropping it's continuing on to mexico this is in the clear language laws that congress put out so any of you guys want to argue with me just go there go look at it you'll see for yourself okay so here's the tricky part for some of you guys like i said the bills must say destination Mexico now if you're bringing it to a forwarder which is one of the forwarders or people brokers whatever you want to call them in the free trade zone um, they're the ones that take care of making sure it gets to Mexico now here's the technicality and you guys can play with it however you want the smart ones I'm sure are gonna be able to figure this out quite easily the not so smart ones maybe you shouldn't even be doing this or attempting it okay and some companies have led drivers astray thinking they can do this. You cannot, and I repeat, cannot live unload the load in the U.S. What you can do, and what we do, is you can drop the trailer at the forwarder. You cannot, and I repeat, cannot again, cut the seal, nor can you open the doors of that trailer. 
Once you're in the forwarder's property, it is their responsibility to do all this. It's their responsibility to cut the seal. If, like, your trailer's not being brought into Mexico. Because a lot of times what happens at the forwarders, the load gets transloaded off your trailer onto a Mexican trailer. However, because of the interstating laws and where you picked it up. Now, if you brought the load from Canada down, doesn't matter. If you picked up within the U.S. and you're bringing it there, you cannot live unload. I put a hand over here, but I'm holding the camera. You technically... Must drop the trailer in the forwarder's yard. The forwarder there is then responsible for either taking your trailer to Mexico and offloading it, bringing it back, or offloading it wherever the hell they want and transloading it onto another trailer. You yourself are not, I repeat, you yourself are not allowed to live offload. Okay? Keep that in mind. A lot of guys do it thinking, oh, I'm in within the free trade zone. I'm at the forward. I'm allowed to do it. Technically, according to the language and the, the way the law is written, you are not supposed to do it. I emphasize the you part. Okay? If you technically drop your trailer at the forwarder and the forwarder takes it from there and does whatever brings you back your trailer and says there's your empty trailer have a nice day here's your signed bills bye bye la you're clear and free you did not deliver the load within the united states okay and yes and the bills again have to have the final destination of mexico like I said, I know there's going to be some guys that are going to try to argue that point. We're not going to get into an argument. This is what we do. This is what I do. You guys can go with it from wherever you want. But you want to do whatever, I don't care. That's entirely up to you. I'm just passing this information along because someone asked. This is what we do. I've been doing it for years. Never had an issue. I've done it right in front of U.S. Customs. Never had an issue. Okay, now if U.S. Customs comes on to that forwarder's property for an inspection, for whatever reason, and they see you in a Canadian truck opening doors and cutting seals and live offloading and decide, let's just check out this load and see where it came from, you could get in trouble. Just saying, you could. You may not, but you could. So, technically... And this is what I've done, is I get to the forwarder, I drop the trailer in their yard, wherever they want it. I drop it. I do not open the doors for them. I do not cut the seal. Security will do that when you come in. They'll usually cut the seal. They'll usually open the door and take a look inside, put whatever paperwork in, take whatever out, blah, 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 blah. Sometimes they transload onto another trailer, sometimes they don't. But I don't care. I don't have anything to do with it. I drop the trailer there. I'm done with it. I'm out of there. See you later. Now, those of you who can't just leave your trailer there and run away, you can drop it, pull away from it, make sure whoever's offloading it opens the doors, cuts the seal, boom, you're, you're free and clear. Like I said, the smart guys can figure this out. So, now, you picking up a load that's in reverse, has come from Mexico, but is delivering in the U.S. somewhere. You can do this. Because it came from Mexico. Now, again, you have to make sure on your bills of lading that it shows origin of Mexico. It must, 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 must have the origin of Mexico. Uh, it doesn't matter who the purchaser is, but it must have that it came from Mexico. And you can bring it up to wherever in the U.S. You can drop it there, and then you can grab another load from there, and you can head north to Canada. Or you can grab another load coming back down, but it must again go to Mexico. It must cross an international border. You cannot take a load, let's say, from St. Louis to Denver, Colorado. Or from Denver, Colorado to Miami, Florida. Uh, you cannot do that. That is interstating. That you will get nailed for very heavily. Uh, so don't do it. Um, unless, of course, you're a U.S. citizen working for a Canadian company, then you've got your U.S. citizenship and you can do it. So, there you go. Um, now, there is another part to this rule that we're not going to get into today because I don't, ha I don't ever do it. 
but there was a provision put on to this interstating law, cabotage law, in regards to a repositioning move. Um, I will try to find, I know I keep looking up, sorry, this because there's crap going on outside. Um, I will try to find, uh, we have it at Saladon, we used to, any rate, the whole thing. I will try to find it, uh, and if I can, I will scan it and get it up on my website, because I haven't touched my website in forever, and so I want to update it uh, for you guys to download it, uh, the actual documents. If not, I will read it off to you, but there is a provision also for repositioning where you can make a southern movement um, to reposition, or you can take, I can't remember exactly, don't quote me on it, where you can pick up a load as long as you're in a northbound lane in direction towards your terminal, your home terminal, which would be, in my case, Kitchener. So, you know, if it was going up towards, let's say, Detroit or Buffalo or, or Thousand Islands, Alex Bay, uh, depending on which way I was coming from. Um, there, there is laws where you can do that to reposition and then grab a load going in. Um, but don't quote me on any of that part of it. Um, uh, it and it can be done, but and it, the provision I think was put in there because of Florida or something. Anyways, whatever. It's not necessarily Florida. Don't, don't quote me again. I will find it. I will get a hold of it at some point or another and I will put it out there for you guys. But as far as taking loads... To Mexico coming back up into the US front with a Mexican load and then going back down you can do that now if you pick up a load in Laredo and the bills of lading don't say anything about Mexico and they say blah 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 forwarding uh, so-and-so Laredo Texas going to ABC manufacturing st. Louis don't take it if it doesn't say Mexico on there anywhere do not take it everyone knows 99% of the loads come from Mexico anyways but do not take it okay that paperwork must say that the load came from mexico now you can take it from abc manufacturing laredo and take it up to canada no problem because you're crossing an international border as long as that load is crossing an international border you are good to go so anyways hopefully i made that clear hopefully it's as understandable as understandable is going to be for further clarification go to the cbp website it is there don't ask me where because I only got the question today, so I haven't even had a chance to look it up. I will in some time in the future try to look it up and we'll do a, an add-on to this video, a part two or whatever. And I will have some links and all that other good crap for you. Just I was asked the question today, so I thought I'd just put it out there because I know there's lots of people that don't quite understand it. And so I'll just let you know, you can do it. Just be very, very careful and that you make sure your paperwork is all in order and right. So there you go. Talk to you next week.